The Lone Ranger. horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. Hello. Faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I am still there. Pete Barrow was geared for travel. His saddlebags held provisions, and he carried gold and cash enough for the long trip from the southern part of Texas to Galveston. With a last look at his comfortable cabin... Pete touched his spurs to his horse's flanks. Come on, get up. Come on, come on. We've one stop to make, Blackie, before we leave these parts. Come on, come on. Pete traveled steadily for half an hour. Then as he approached a small cabin belonging to a widow named Peggy Wilson, he removed his battered hat and smoothed his bushy red hair. Oh, doggone it, Blackie, I... I wish I could get up nerve enough to ask her to marry me. Hi there, Pete. Hello, Joey. The widow's son, Joey, ran from the cabin to hail the young prospector. Oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, Blackie, oh, boy. How are you, Joey? Fine, Pete. Uh, is your mom busy? Busy, but glad to see you, Pete. <laughs> Come on in. Easy, steady, boy. Uh, thanks. Uh, I wanted to stop to say goodbye. Goodbye? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to Galveston. Oh, but what about your claim? Oh, I'm not pulling stakes for keeps. I'm just going to pick up and pay for machinery that'll help me get the gold out of the claim faster. Oh, how long will you be gone, Pete? Oh, maybe a month. Yeah, but, Dad, read it, I, I'll be worried about you two while I'm gone. Oh, we'll be all right, Pete. Of course, we'll miss you. Well, I... Oh, doggone it, I... Why don't you marry me, Peg? Oh, Pete! My gold claim's a mighty good one. I could take care of you and Joey in first-rate style. Gosh! If Mom married you, you'd be my dad, wouldn't you? That's right, Joey. I think I'd like that, Mom. It'd be great to have a dad. How about it, Peg? Well, I I can't give you an answer now, Peter. I'd have to think it over. How long will that take? Well, when you get back from Galveston, I'll tell you what I've decided. But that's a month from now. Well, that'll give me plenty of time to make up my mind. Uh, Well, I reckon I'll have to wait till then to know. (laughs) Well, you've waited a long time to ask me, Pete. Another month shouldn't make any difference. I hope you have a good trip. Thanks. Stop and see us as soon as you get back, Pete. I sure will, partner. Good luck and goodbye. So long. And take care of yourself. Late that night in a prison a short distance south of Houston, a killer named Speed Royal gripped a crude knife he had fashioned from a tin plate. He tested the edge carefully while his cellmate watched anxiously. What about it, Speed? The edge is plenty sharp, Spider. All we've got to do now is get that guard to stand close to the cell door. I hope we can do it. Start moaning and groaning like you're sick enough to die. Yeah, all right. Oh, oh, I'm sick. I, I think I'm dying. Oh, Speed. Speed, I need a doctor. I'm awful sick. Oh. Hank Paris, the middle-aged oh. guard on duty, came to the cell oh. to investigate Spider Randall's cries. Oh, quiet down, you. You wouldn't be quiet if you fell as sick as he does. Oh, what ails him? How do I know? Oh. He's complaining all evening he didn't feel good. Oh. Now I reckon he's worse. Oh, I'm dying. You better get a doctor here, oh. Prado guard. I don't want to wake Doc Ellis oh. at this hour of the night unless that critter's really sick. Oh. 
Now stand back from the door, uh, Speed. What you can Get see? back there while I open this. Uh, I'll take a look at Randall myself. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. As he stepped back from the barred door, Speed suppressed a pleased smile. This was even easier than trying to force the guard to unlock the door. The unsuspecting guard entered the dimly lit cell and moved toward the bunk where Spider lay. Before he reached it, Speed lunged forward. Grab him, Speed. Here, what the... This knife's homemade, but it's sharp enough to cut your throat, so freeze. Why, you... Take his gun, Spider. I got it. Good. Don't try to yell for help or make a fast move. Use his handkerchief to gag him, Spider. Yeah. Well, use strips of the mattress cover to tie his hands and feet. A few minutes later, Speed unlocked the door leading from the prison to the yard. We'll need horses to get away from here, Speed. We'll go to the stable, take the guard on duty by surprise, steal a couple of critters, and leave by the back gate. The back gate's locked. I know, but the stable guard has a key to open it. The yard clear? Yeah. Stay out of the moonlight. Stick close to the side of the building so the guards on the wall can't see us. I savvy. The shadow will cover us. Right. We'll watch our chance to make a run for the stable. Come on. Quickly but cautiously, the two convicts crept along the side of the prison until they reached the lantern-lit stable. Through the open door, they saw the guard on duty. His back's toward us. Looks like he's repairing our harness. We'll have to move careful. I'll go first. Holding the gun he had taken from the prison guard... Speed Royal approached the busy stableman as silently as a shadow. Without warning, he brought his gun down hard on the man's head. Uh, he's out cold, Speed. <laughs> he never knew what hit him. All the better for us. Now we got the pick of the stable. Before we get horses, I'm going to change clothes with this fellow. Hey, well, I'll take his gun. Too bad we didn't think of changing clothes with a guard we left in our cell. Then we'd both be rid of these prison uh, outfits. I never thought of that. That's too late now to go back. You wait here while I go take care of the guard at the back gate. It took Speed but a few minutes to change clothes with the unconscious stableman. Then he tied and gagged him and left the stable. Carefully and silently, he approached the gate in the dark shadow of the prison wall until he reached the dozing guard standing near it. Before the man could collect himself, Speed brought his gun down in a hard blow. The guard fell to the ground unconscious. When Speed returned to the stable... Spider had two fine-looking horses ready for travel. The guard at the back gate's tied and gagged, Spider. And I took the key to unlock the gate. Come on, let's go. Yeah, come on. Oh, I can hardly believe our luck, Speed. We're not out of here yet, but we soon will be. Oh, 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 oh steady. Oh. Yeah, that does it, Spider. Gate's open. Steady. Easy there. All right, let's go. Come on, get, get him. Get him. Early the next morning, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode through the hills toward the prison, where the masked man planned to see his old friend, Warden Paul Simmons. They were less than five miles south of the prison walls when they heard riders approaching. Oh, oh, oh. As the Lone Ranger signaled a halt, a searching party from the prison came into view. Hank Paris, the guard, was in the lead. Oh, 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 oh. At the sight of the masked man and Tonto, Hank and the men with him drew rein. Don't try a fast move. Get covered. Covered and outnumbered. That's right. Keep your hands high. We're not outlaws. He's right, boys. Most of your guns. But that mask. Mask or no mask. He's visited the warden half a dozen times at the prison. He and the engine are friends of the warden. Oh, friends? Oh, thanks. Oh, don't thank me. I'm in too much trouble now to risk losing my job for capturing the warden's friends. You're in trouble? Up to my ears. A couple of crooks named Speed Royal what? and Spider Randall tricked me into opening their cell door last night. They tied and gagged Hank. Then came to the stable, slugged, tied, and gagged me. Stole two horses and vamoosed. Speed Royal. Yeah, he's a no-good killer. Ah, we know. We helped capture him. You helped capture him? I heard that the Lone Ranger was... Great sakes alive. Now I know who you are, mister. You're the Lone Ranger. Why, well, sure he is. Yes. How long has Speed Royal been free? Well, since about midnight. These are his tracks. Tunnel thou join the search. Well, that's the best news I've heard yet. With all of us looking for him, we ought to be sure to recapture those crooks. All right, let's go, boys. Get up there. Get up. Get up. Come on, Phil. Get him up. Come. For several hours, the trail was clear and easy to follow. Then the tracks led into a stream. The searching party drew rain. Oh, 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 oh. Now we'll scatter and try to pick up the tracks where they come out of the stream. Right. Get up there. Come on, get up. Get up. Come on, Toto. We'll cross to the other side of the stream. 
Hansel. Come, Scout. Come, Scout. The masked man and Tonto were some distance from the other searchers when the Indian signaled a halt. Oh, Scout. Hold that, man. Oh, Scout. Easy, Scout. Easy, fellow. He swung from the saddle and examined the rocky ground beside the creek. What is it, Tonto? Here, a place where crooks leave streams. Good work. Easy, Scout. Easy, fellow. Trail heads south from here. All right, we'll follow it. You want me to go back? Tell guards we find crooks' tracks? They'll find the tracks soon themselves. We'll keep after speed and his pal. Ah, me savvy. Monsieur! Get him up, Scout! We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. to continue. Half a day's travel from Eyeglass Creek. Pete Barrow had drawn rain to prepare a light midday meal when he heard horsemen approaching. Too late, he saw Spider's prison garb and the drawn gun in Speed Royal's hand. Oh, 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 oh. Don't try to reach for your gun, stranger. Yeah, just keep your hands high and you won't get hurt. Oh, what are you after? Change your clothes and whatever cash you're carrying. <laughs> Take his gun, Spider. Yeah, sure. Before Spider could take the weapon, Pete snatched it from the holster. You chughead. Oh! Oh! Dusk was falling when the Lone Ranger and Tonto saw a man in prison garb riding toward them. The masked man and Indian drew rein. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh fella. There one convict, Kimasabi. That man's hurt, Tonto. You're right. I'll stop his horse. Come on, Silver. Come, Scum. Come, fella. Oh, there, fellow. Oh, easy. Oh, easy, steady, Silver. Easy, Scum. Oh, yeah. You're mad. Yes, but I'm not an outlaw. All right. Look out, Kimasabi. Him fall. I have him. Be. Help you lift him from saddle. All right. I'm weak. Steady. Easy. Kimasabi, this fellow not Speed Royal or Spider Randall. No, I, I'm not a convict. The critter who wore these clothes Sit is Sit down convict. here while we examine your wound. Yeah. Oh, thanks, mister. Now, who shot you? Two fellas rode up to my fire. One of them was wearing these clothes. He, he said he wanted to change clothes with me. So that's it. I, I went for my gun and his... Partner, let me have it. Bring my medical supplies in the canteen, will you, Tonto? Uh-huh. Let me get them. A few minutes later, Pete's wounded shoulder was bandaged with clean gauze. Tonto offered the wounded prospector a canteen. Uh, here. Here, water. Oh, th- thanks, engine. Oh. Oh, I... I'm feeling a lot better than I did when you found me. Are you strong enough to travel? Yeah, but in this outfit, I'm likely to be shot on sight as an escaped convict. Mm, that's right. My guns are gone. I can't defend myself. Tonto and I are after the men who robbed you. If you're able to keep pace with us, you're welcome to come along. Well, that settles it. I'll travel with you. Don't worry. I'll keep up with you. All right. Get the saddle. Having gone without sleep the night before and traveled hard all day long... The escaped convicts were heavy-eyed with fatigue when they sighted the lighted windows of Mrs. Wilson's cabin ahead. We might be able to get fresh horses at the place ahead, Speed. These critters are doggone near worn out. And so am I. Sure like to stop for a couple of hours rest. I hate to risk stopping. Well, we're two days' travel from the border. We've got to stop somewhere and sleep. Well, we'll think about that after we get fresh horses. Draw rain. Oh, 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 oh. I'll go talk to the fellow who owns this place. You keep me covered, but don't show your gun. We don't want to rouse suspicion. I see. Abby. Anyone home? We want to talk about swapping a couple of horses. Mrs. Wilson opened the door and explained that she had no horses to trade. Speed asked a few more questions and rejoined his partner. A woman and a boy live here alone. They've got two horses, but the lady says the critters are old and slow. She might be lying. No, I don't think so. We've got to get fresh horses, Speed. Ours can't go much farther. Yeah, what's wrong with resting them for the night here? What about us? We won't find a better place to rest. A woman and a youngster can't make any trouble for us. Yeah, maybe not. I'll go talk to the woman again. Mrs. Wilson was reluctant to let the two strangers stay, but Speed offered to pay well for food and a night shelter so she agreed to let them sleep in the kitchen. They put their weary horses in the corral, 
then ate the meal she and Joey set before them. A few minutes later, they were sound asleep. Joey said, Mom, I'll bet anything those two are crooks. Why, Joey, we don't know they're crooks. That shirt the bald-headed fellow's wearing looks like Pete's. Yes, yes, it does. He must have stolen it. He might have bought the shirt in the same store Pete bought his. I still think they're crooks, Mom. I wish we hadn't let them in. I hated to refuse them food and shelter, son. They might have come to rob us. Maybe when we're asleep. Well, they'll get mighty little money from us, dear. But just to make sure they'll not harm us, we'll play a trick on them. A trick? We'll take the cartridges from their guns and gun belts. They're not wearing gun belts. Well, that'll make it easier for us. They'll be awful mad when they find out their guns are empty. They won't know they're empty unless they try to use them. Early the next morning, Joey was building up a fire in the big kitchen stove when Speed and Spider wakened. Oh, it's all ragged. Oh, we're getting breakfast ready. Oh, I slept like a log. Yeah, so did I. The fire's all set, Mom. I'll bring in some more wood. All right, dear. If you men would like to wash before breakfast, well, hey, you'll... What's that? Sounds like riders. We might get more company for breakfast, Mom. I heard horsemen heading this way. I'll look out and see what it is. Hey. What's wrong, mister? Honey. Who is it, Speed? A masked man, a red Mom, skin. it's Pete. But, but he's wearing a convict suit. Oh, Pete wearing convict's clothes with a masked man and an Indian. It's the Lone Ranger, Spider. What? That masked man captured me once, but he'll not get me again. I'll get him down here and now. Oh. Uh, what the... Get him, Speed. I can't. My gun's empty. As Speed Royal grabbed for another gun, Peg Wilson seized Joey's hand and ran outside. Stand still or I'll kill you both. Come on, Joey. All right. Uh, Pete. Peg, are you all right? Yes, but those two men... Get down, ma'am. You make a perfect target. We better stay close to sight of building. But they... they can't shoot. We took the bullets from their guns. You what? Joey told me they were crooks. So last night we took the bullets from the gun. Oh, that was mighty smart. I've got the bullets right here in my pocket. Do you have any other weapons in the house? Only a six-shooter my husband owned. It's in the drawer in my bedroom. I, I don't think they'll be able to find it fast enough to help them. Mm, that good trick to use on crooks. Is there a back door to this cabin? Yes. Give them a chance to come out with their hands up. If they don't, Toto, I'll go in this door after them. You go around the back. Ah, me savvy. You might as well give up, Speed. Not on your life. I'm not through yet. With a nod to Tonto, the masked man headed for the front door, while the Indian started for the rear of the small cabin. Holding a gun in one hand, the Lone Ranger said, I'm coming after you, Speed. The outlaw didn't answer, but a slight movement betrayed him, realizing the two convicts waited just inside the door. The masked man stood outside the open door until he saw Tonto enter the room from the other side. You get hands up. It's the Indian. The escaped convict held pieces of firewood to use as clubs. Tonto dodged as Spider hurled his improvised weapon across the room while the little ranger sidestepped a vicious blow from Speed's club. Who are you? Before the killer could swing again, the masked man fired. A silver bullet grazed his hand, forcing him to drop the firewood. Don't shoot. Please don't. Spider stood with his hands raised under the menace of Tonto's gun. I'll kill you. Your killing days are over, Speed. You're going back to prison. Me keep them covered, Kimasabi. Good. I'll tie their hands. A few minutes later, Spider again wore the prison clothes he had changed with Pete, and the young prospector was dressed in his own clothes. As the masked man and Tonto escorted the prisoners from the cabin, Pete counted the money he had recovered. Your horses are saddled and ready for the trip to prison. Every bit of my money's here, mister. Glad to hear it, Pete. I'm downright grateful to you and Tonto. Well, we're grateful to you for helping us recapture those killers. All right, hit the saddle speed. You too, Spider. Uh, Easy, city, big fella. He's got me. Get going, you two. Come on, get yeah. Come on, fiddle there. Come on, come. Oh, my. Dad, ratted Peg, you and Joey need a man to protect you. I reckon we do, Pete. And you've had plenty of time to think about what I asked you. <laughs> yes, I, I've had more than enough time to think. Pete, Joey and I, well, we love and need you. Well, well then you... You'll marry me? Yes. Oh, great day alive. I... Oh, Peg. Golly, the Lone Ranger and Tano didn't waste any time getting started with those crooks. What? The Lone Ranger? Is that who the masked man is? Those crooks told Mom and me who he was, didn't they, Mom? That's right, son. Oh, thunderation, what a day this has been. I was robbed and shot, and you agreed to marry me, and I met the Lone Ranger. Ah, 
are the good old days, back when people were old-fashioned and the things your grandmother used to bake were fresh and piping hot. Well, at the Marita Bakeries, things haven't changed much over the years. Like Marita old-fashioned enriched white bread. There's a seal on every loaf that says, Marita guarantees freshness and is sold fresh through day shown on the twist tie. Maintain freshness by storing at room temperature. And when Marita says old-fashioned, it means it's made from a rich, old-fashioned recipe. And that means it's fresh. The idea of fresh anything, especially fresh bread, has been around for a long time. But folks forget what really old-fashioned freshness tastes like. That's why there's Marita. Marita enriched white bread. It has a freshness and taste that hasn't been around for a long time. That's a fresh idea that's very old-fashioned. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Thank you.